We have a crowd here wanting to see some Grand Poo World 2. So let's do it. Here's Grand Poo World 2 for Dream Bitch. Flower power. Good luck. What's up, guys? I'm Mitch Flower Power, and this is Noble Tofu. I'm Graham Pooh Bear. Whoa! <laughs> I'm Barbarous King. And we are doing. Uh, come on, come on! <laughs> and this is Graham Pooh World 2. Can I get a countdown from you guys? Starting from five on go. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah. So for those who don't know, um, this man right here to my left, Barbarous King, he made this game. I so, made this. Yes, he so made I this. Made he this, literally yeah. made this game. I face. <laughs> yes. You uh, made this? I made this. So we're going to delve deep into your uh, mind brain. The mind brain. All right. Into some of these <laughs> levels here. Okay. I'm going to die a lot here. Yes, this is not on an easy game. Every level all over the place. Also, I should mention, I will be donating uh, $10 uh, to the event for each death Mitch takes. So <laughs> hopefully he doesn't die that often. So yeah, this is uh, Grand Portal 2. This is the game I made. Uh, one thing that we should say about this game is that everything in this game is very, very difficult. It is one of the hardest Kaizo games ever made, and the fact that it's at a GDQ at all is incredible. And uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, so Mitch, Mitch is already crushing it. Oh, nice. <laughs> I can't believe, so can't believe you just got away with that. I've grabbing that midway. That is a lot, lot harder than it looks. Uh, and in fact, I think that's the, that's the one trick in this level that most people die on the most, just grabbing that midway. Yeah, I skip the midway. I, <laughs> I don't even get it, I've never gotten it. He still it's, doesn't know how to get no, it. No, I have no idea. <laughs> he has no it. idea to get it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Some fancy Koopa jumps here. Ooh. This final jump. Oh! oh. That was it. <laughs> Boy! Boy. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Australian. You guys can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last game, guys. <laughs> so yeah, that final sequence, you uh, there's actually multiple ways you can do that. Uh, the intended way is to use all of the Koopas, but if you time your jump, you can actually just use three. It's really, really difficult to line up and really, really tough to uh, actually land. Yeah, it's super tight, that and muncher. Try. There is and the then, final troll yes. at the goal. Very smooth. And um, as you can see, that was level one. This game is not going to get any easier going through there. Oh, whoa, getting a little, a little What's beauty up? touch up. Yeah, That's getting a little on. touch up there. You know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is level two. This, uh, the name of this level is Laser Lifts. It is named after uh, my good buddy Laser Belch, who was in the Blind Kaiser race earlier. And if you guys didn't wait, know this... What's wait, he, wait, what team was he on, though? Oh, uh, he was on the Loser Magicians. Just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's my joke, and everyone's been stealing it. <laughs> but if you guys didn't know this about Laser Belch, uh, he lifts. He lifts a lot, so... <laughs> This level is essentially just one big auto scroller, right? It, it doesn't sound good when you say it like that. I prefer a uh, self-contained moving level, <laughs> you know? So um. the, the theme of this level is that th this one platform you'll escort through the entirety of the level. Uh, and that will continue into the second section as well. <laughs> is I, it the same platform? I just realized the it's the same platform. <laughs> All right, coming up on that part, if you saw that he jumped really awkward there, there's actually a really mean invisible block that has uh, killed a lot of people and caused a lot of laughter for me. Oh my god. It's the same platform. It is the same platform. I've never realized that. <laughs> I never realized it's the same platform. I just platform. blew their minds. Yeah. Secret. Okay, that so hot lore. Mitch is going to, against, <gasps> against my advice, is going to go for a really, really hard strat that was thought to only be TAS only. If he gets this, who has to give him a lot of money? <laughs> No, no joke. This is so hot if he gets this. Ooh. Oh, my God. So normally you're supposed to take that platform, but uh, we're going to... No! Oh my God, I told you I was going to do that. Oh, oh, oh it debated me. Yeah. yeah. So that... 
it's, it's not just that, that that's incredibly hard. It's also uh, dependent on RNG because yeah. the uh, the way he throws it is is random. Yeah, that, that's not how you're supposed to do that part. No, <laughs> but uh, literally on, only Mitch only Mitch has ever even successfully done that without a task. So uh, I don't know. Mitch Flyerpower just sees games in a way that we do not. <laughs> Yeah. It's yeah, the blue he, hair. He doesn't ask how. He asks, why not? <laughs> he went for it once. That's that's admirable. <laughs> he didn't want to cost me too much money on that <laughs> one. <laughs> Which I appreciate. That's good. That's true friendship right there. <laughs> All right, something you might not know if you're looking at this level, it probably looks like, oh, yeah, you just put the lines and the platform just goes where you want it to. Uh, when you're actually building a section like this, the platform just will constantly disappear and destroy. So it actually took me a lot of time to make this. I love this part. It's the final jump. Ooh. Very nice. I love how at the end of this level, you already tie it into via beach right. for the following level. Every, all of them. Right. Yes. So wherever I could, I wanted to make the levels transition into one another because I wanted the world. A lot, of, a lot of times in Kaizo games will just be like, you know, one level leads to another and they have no actual connection. I wanted there to be like a tangible world that felt like a real place. So when you beat that level, you end up at this level, which is the beach. And, and you've noticed the down ramp like went right into it from the last level. I love that. That's like such a, a nice little touch. And also, uh, banger alert on the track right now. Yeah, shout out to Composer. Uh, Composer is in the is, uh <laughs> Uh, composer, Dan the VP, G Gamer, a number of people helped me. I, I'm not a musician, I can't make music, and they, they uh, the Grand Portal 2 would not be the same game without their insane efforts, so thank you to them. Oh. Oh. Vertical pipes. Vertical pipes. So this part, normally in Mar Super Mario World, the uh, tide only moves left, and it only moves a certain speed. Uh, I actually went through some extra custom ASM work to make the tide go right and go a lot faster, and that's sort of like the general theme here. Uh, this part was one of the hardest parts during the first play, that little <laughs> fish gate. Uh, yeah. Many a player cursed Barb during, that, <laughs> during those moments. Yes. It was, it was maybe the first time, but it certainly wasn't the last time I was cursed. <laughs> A very tight P switch coming up. With another vertical pipe. In there. You gotta push your vertical pipes in your Kaiser games. <laughs> so yeah, if he had missed that, uh, actually there's a picture of Composer in that level, and it's one of the worst trolls in the game. So, <laughs> send you back there, yeah. <laughs> All right. So if you notice, the hill went up right there at the end of that level, and uh, that'll tie into the next theme. Mm -hmm. Frustrating. Spoiler alert. So that little section on the overworld, that's actually uh, sort of like made the island again, but from a more zoomed out point of view. Again, to try to make it seem like a world that made sense. This level, we're in the snowy mountains. This level features ice physics, and one of the best things you can do with ice physics is be big and uh, force the player to duck everywhere. Uh, there's, there's a little helper block there. That block is only there to guide you on your way. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly <laughs> Absolutely. Um, something I want to point out that's really cool. If you look at the screen, uh, both the timer and the snow disappears when they're actually like under a cave, which is so sexy and such like an awesome little added detail that Barb didn't have to do. But even under these blocks, right? Yeah, there. it just yeah. makes it feel like super. I don't know. This cohesive. damage boost here is really tight. Really yeah, tight. Only a few. Oh, nailed right it. Yeah. Go on the pipe. Isn't there go a left, pipe? Go left. Go left. Yeah, there's a pipe right there. What's oh my god! Secret. <laughs> So in this game, a lot of people what? like to put little secrets in. <laughs> Other pipe. How do I get out? Okay. <laughs> I didn't even know. I didn't even know. <laughs> people like to put little secrets and Easter eggs in their games. And uh, in this game, there are portraits of all people from the Super Mario World and Mario Maker community that uh, I really love. So I put them pretty much everywhere I possibly could. That's our buddy uh, Link Dead. Shout out to Link Dead. Oh, we really love you too, Barb. Oh, well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the insincerity. <laughs> that was, I meant that. That, that, was, falling that was romance. This is where you reach the summit of the mountain. Ooh, very close. Ooh. Oh! Oh! <laughs> 
That well one shot. Done. That was a one shot. Yeah, that was a one yeah, shot. That, I that was a one that. shot. That's a very difficult yeah, level. That level to get out of that one shot is like super important. That is that's uh, a frustrating level. Yeah, that's the reset yeah. level. Speeds are really weird with that level. There's a number of orbs in this game. <laughs> There's a number of orbs in this game, and the orb music has actually been substituted for the Ocarina of Time, like, dungeon clear music. So pretty much everywhere, we there, no, we spared no expense on all the details. You had a big music budget for this game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this level is titled Thalassophobia because you spend the entire level underwater, and if you actually look at the time, it's a, he, he's on a time crunch. Yeah. yeah, this Mario cannot swim forever. So any one of these pipes, you probably, Mitch will probably avoid them all, but any one of these pipes, if you're pressing down or up in any way, uh, you'll get uh, dragged into a nasty troll pipe. Okay. <laughs> it's really funny. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you should go look up clips of people falling for that troll. Uh, that final dolphin I'm is sorry. another helper dolphin that lifts you into the saws. <laughs> So this section, um, I wanted to make, I, I really like making vertical levels and vertical sections, and uh, there aren't too many water sections like this. I don't think I know of any section remotely like this. Uh, this one, you need to use the dolphin everywhere to go. Uh, yeah. He lifts you above the lines of invisible blocks. If I went too fast there, I would have despawned him. Mm -hmm. These part, these blocks are all here to slow you down. They all have bonus one-ups and coins, but those don't help you here. <laughs> those aren't helper blocks. No, they are not. Oh, oh. Uh, it's gonna be really tight now. Oh. oh, that's it. Yep. Yeah, so you're on a you're on a pretty tight timer everywhere in this level. It almost sort of feels like you're just mashing a control in the controller the entire time for this level. It really is like one false move and that's it. Like you basically are dead. Yeah, and that's I, I think that's one thing that the uh, Kaizo speedruns they really get a, a really you really get a good sense of how hard all this stuff is. Yeah. like Mitch will beat this in you know an hour and change or even less, and it, it, an average playthrough like some people will play 300 hours and not get five levels in. All right, we're returning to the section we were at before. So when he uses that throw block to kill that torpedo Ted, that torpedo Ted is still actually can kill you even when it's dead. It just sort of moves it out of the way for a little while. <laughs> very nice. There nice. we go. Very nice. Do we have time for a couple donations? Sure. Yeah. All right. We have five hundred dollars from the Running with Speed documentary. Oh. Very cool. Is it and they say it's an honor to be here. Thank you very much for your donation. And we have a $5,000 donation from Unknown Worlds Entertainment. Wow. And they say thanks to Power Up Audio for being an incredible partner and for supporting such an amazing cause. Let's hear for Power Up Audio one more time. Thank you so much for all you do here. Back to you, Barb. Thank you. Prestige worldwide, wide, wide. So we should probably talk about the fact that so the, Mitch is running a category called Any Percent Good Ending, and we should probably talk about the fact that Mitch is literally the only person who goes this path. Yes. Um, so there's actually a choice that the, this is pretty unique for a Kaizo game. Usually Kaizo games, you have to beat every single level. I decided to give the player a choice, and pass. Mitch is yeah pass in this game. And Mitch is literally the only insane person who goes this way. <laughs> yeah, this way is uh, both harder and. Slightly Ooh. longer, but Mitch prefers it, and so uh, who are who are we to question him? Honestly, like we're not we're not the ones running this game. He's the one murdering this game right now. You know, it really all comes down to player comfort, and uh, um, oh boy, oh. <laughs> I tried to pressure him into Come a on, one last frame minute pressure. Yeah, one frame trick. So. Uh, so oh, those purple bats are actually uh, the so what, ghost. Blue field. Goomba. I should have done. <laughs> oh, blue no, Goomba. the blue Goomba. <laughs> the Goomba. Uh, <laughs> uh, those purple bats are actually uh, the Whee! sort of like the ghost ceiling from uh, various Whee! ghost levels. I, I really like this section. Nope. Oh. I, I almost didn't like it anymore. <laughs> that was like the instant karma. That I very suddenly happened. don't like this section anymore. <laughs> yeah, you can never compliment your own gameplay in Kaizo because you immediately die. So this section involves uh, bringing the skull rafts with you uh, everywhere. And uh, this first part, these skull rafts are very slow and you have a lot of time to move. The second part, they're a little bit faster. <laughs> yeah, now the ending of this is also uh, very unique and cool and uh, was an ending that I spent like, I don't know, probably like 45 minutes on how to figure <laughs> out. It took me two hours to figure out this trick right this, here. It's, and it's so simple and sneaky. 
Very so. nice. Another one shot. Another one oh. shot. Dude, he's saving yeah. me that money, man. So if you grab that orb, uh, and what matters when you grab orb, there's actually in that section, if you do grab the orb in a slightly wrong way, you will not catch the skull platform. You will fall on the lava and die. And uh, the look on people's faces, like who, when that happened, were just hilarious. <laughs> All right, this level's really hard. Yeah, this is one of the but hardest. But we need levels. we need to lift our spirits here, so we're gonna go ahead. <laughs> secret, secret, no <laughs> <Don't> secret. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite moments from watching people play this game was when streamers and my friends found their portraits, and uh, Tofu was completely shocked, I think, that he was in the game. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think my favorite one is the Beast, which unfortunately we won't see. Yeah, the is, Beast is the other path. Yeah, I think he made an emote out of that picture. He, he did, yeah, yeah. He made an emote out of it. Some weird thing with us all wearing cowboy hats. <laughs> <laughs> so this section, you're actually going to see a glitch. This is not, uh, this is intended by me. So normally with Yoshi, uh, baby Yoshi requires five eats to grow up into big Yoshi. Oh, that was a little helper fish, by the way. That's helper fish. I love that's what you read, name them just, too. Well, it's just to make sure you know where you're at. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Um, but in that part, uh, you can actually turn three into five by eating things. Oh, exactly. Oh. Thank that, God. That, you don't kill really Yoshi there, death. though. Thank God. <laughs> that jump is very, very difficult. It's probably the most difficult jump in the whole level. And it's right before the midway, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Yeah. Uh, and you're going to see a lot of that, actually, in this game. The, the most difficult portions tend to be the parts right before you would get to safety. That's the best place to put them. Yep. <laughs> That's called comedy, right? That's All right. In the level building business, they call that comedy. <laughs> yeah. He's got it. So we're going to see the triple eat again. There you go. It's actually possible to where if you um, don't eat all three of them fast enough, you actually don't grow Yoshi. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. So what's funny is that that fish sometimes does not respawn, and I, I don't know why. <laughs> sometimes it's <laughs> nice. just not there. Oh, Yoshi. Um, Follow the coin please. trail. That's a good idea. Peace, Yoshi. <laughs> <laughs> this part's pretty tough, too. Yeah. Shoutouts to Doom. Yeah, There's some Doom music. Uh, big what's Doom weird fan. about the water, guys? <laughs> well, I mean, I think I think it is something we should point out is uh, it's it's pee pee water, and um, it makes everything go backwards. So all of his controls in this water section right there that you're about to see are reversed. Yeah, left is right and right is left. It's so hard, and then they go back as soon as you jump out of the water. They reverse back, so it's a very difficult section to navigate. Of course, he just you know does it no problem because he's Mitch Flower Power. Okay, this final jump. If you're too slow, there are falling spikes there, and those 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 are helper spikes. Funny. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for it. Yeah, helper yeah, spikes. Yeah. Right. Helper spikes. Well, but, you don't want it. They don't want you to die in the lava. Exactly. You know, get moving. I thought my spiral was going to be there. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> no, you're killing it. No, you're yeah, doing great. You are killing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> this is a really good run right now. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm in, I'm in total control in this level. <laughs> All right, so this level, um, I'm, a, I'm a huge Shovel Knight fan, and one of my inspirations was the Propeller Knight level from uh, Shovel Knight. So I added these propellers with the help of uh, Freakin' Ha. Shout out to twitch.tv slash Freakin' Ha. The number one follow on Twitch right there, ladies and gentlemen. If we want to follow the stream. Yep. Yeah. And these wind, these uh, the wind coming from the fans will either blow you up or down depending on the section and uh, make it rather difficult. Okay, coming up, we have the best ever pee balloon section. Here it comes. It's over. <laughs> it's over. It's over. <laughs> I'm going to break your immersion by telling you that the, the propeller actually isn't pushing wind. The propeller is just a muncher that's reskinned to look like it's a propeller. Yeah, the propeller actually doesn't do anything at all except kill you. It's just there to also show you where the wind is. It's, it's a nice aesthetic touch right there. Yeah, there was a, a Kaizo block right there, a very mean one. Do we have any donations? As a matter of fact, we do. We have $100 from Hawkeye1701. That's our shout outs to Mitch, the amazing couch honoring us with their amazing commentary, and the whole incredible Mario community. Love you all. 
The levels go hard. Oh, there was one request the there. <laughs> Can we get a get out Ryu's of my room? Ryu's from Ryu's from denied. Oh sorry, my god. Ryu. Yo, Ryu's chat is gonna hate you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, I'm not getting all the portraits. Oh man, they're gonna let you know how much better he is than than you this week. Barb. There was a request from Hawkeye. They wanted to know, can we get a get out of my room from you? Uh, just wait and see, you know? We'll, we'll uh... Get out of my room. <laughs> Whee! Oh. Uh. <laughs> All right, Thanks, we should probably Barb. talk about this level. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Dark Souls. Uh, Barb Souls. Barb yeah. Souls. Barb Souls. I, Barb Souls. Barb Souls. Barb if you Souls. didn't know, that, the reason why Barb Souls was the name of the Dark Souls 2 save file, that was that was my chat trolling everybody. So, <laughs> I am Barb Souls. I am Barb Souls. <laughs> but uh, this level is called Sense Fortress. There's a lot of Sense Fortress inspiration here. Um, all of these ropes, if you're wondering why is he falling through these ropes, uh, these are tight ropes. If he walks too fast, he will he will fall through the ropes. In some places you don't want to, and other places you do have to, uh, and you, those will be uh, throughout the level. Yeah, it's one of the coolest and weirdest mechanics in this game, <laughs> and something that took a great deal of time to get used to. Coming up on the midway here, I also made the midway uh, jump up and down in there. No Very problem. Very nice. No death. Yeah. Okay, these are Bowser's big bouncing balls. Uh, That's their technical term. Yeah. I don't know why I did five. It's, it's four. How many deaths is that? Not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so these balls have been uh, edited to uh, move faster, and uh, you'll see that these Bowser's balls just fly everywhere in this level. Y'all, y'all. <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> <laughs> We're 12. There's literally nothing else that could be called. Boulders? They're big. No, they're big giant balls. I mean, they're too smooth for boulders. Yeah. <laughs> where is the it's point smooth where as eggs. a boulder, <laughs> it's a boulder or a ball? <laughs> if it's a dodecahedron, <laughs> if it's a dodecahedron, it's a, uh, a boulder. Okay, so Mitch paused right there. He was pausing to re-engage jump quickly so he would not fall through. Wow. Yeah, it's a galaxy brain strat. Definitely. Okay, there's a really nasty uh, door entry coming up. Gets to ride the snake man magic over here. And we should mention the ultimate bad guy in all video games. Is Very the, nice. I was literally so scared. Like, yeah. that's the scariest No, strat. the door is so... I, I, we can't, like, overestimate how hard that door is. Like, it's so hard. Every single door in this game is really actually hard to go into. And that's not a joke. That is a dead serious statement. So Super Mario World bosses can, are pretty stale at this point in ROM hack. So with a little bit of help from uh, Kaizo Man, who is a literal legend, we have uh, what's called the Cluster Chuck. <laughs> oh, great hitbox. That's right. And uh, boys nice. can get out of hand in this fight very quickly. Uh, Mitch actually is going to handle it wow. really nicely, yeah. though. That was Not a over. very, very clean fight. Not over. Not so over. this boss has uh, two phases. The first one you just saw. Second phase, he goes um, kamikaze. Nice. Oh, oh, very yeah. nice. Oh, yeah. yeah so, so, now. so Mitch was in a safe zone <laughs> to where he couldn't get hit by the explosion. It's actually really hard yeah. to get up there. And every single person who runs this game has definitely died to that explosion. <laughs> yes. Uh, the and kamikaze it's, mode. It's, yeah. We've, yeah, we've one-shot the first section and then died to that bomb. It's and always it's, hilarious. It's, it's funny every time. <laughs> A little helper explosion, right? <laughs> yeah, a helper explosion and no, you were close. <laughs> this might be a good time to talk about the lore, actually, why we have a second. So Mario is actually, he left Grand Poo World 1 yes. on a ship. It crashed. Um, and that's where the start of the game was. You saw that ship actually crash. And, uh, and now we're basically trying to get off this other island. Mm -hmm. You can actually see the original game's island, Grand Poo World 1 island, from the uh, corner of the map. Right. Yes. And it's uh, another one of the cool things about this yeah. game is it has legit lore in a Kaizo series. Yeah, there's very few Kaizo games that have a kind of connected story or world. In fact, there really aren't any. So uh, I, I kind of wanted to go the extra mile and uh, include that for players of Grand Poo World 1 and 2. Uh, this level right here is, I think, argued amongst anyone who runs this game to be one of the most difficult levels throughout the whole thing. Before we do the level proper, though, we actually have to go backwards to get a secret exit, uh, which secret. we're coming up right here. Secret. This is secret. one of the most stressful levels in the run, yeah. hands down. Uh, also, banger alert, and this is the only... That was not me. That was not me. <laughs> I did not do anything. Reset? It saved. I don't know.
Never Don't look that. at me. It was not me. Or the checkpoint, of course. <laughs> Legs up. That's never happened before. <laughs> it's a secret. I just get to break dance again. I feel like I'm going to end up getting blamed for this. <laughs> Pooh, I got news for you. You're already being blamed by Chad I right knew, now. I knew it. There's, there's, there's poo stomps everywhere. There's no avoiding that. <laughs> Thanks for being a good sport. Oh, my gosh. You know, you build a thousand bridges. No, it crashes. It's, it's crashing here. I'm not sure why. Blow on it. <laughs> Wait an extra second to go on that pipe, maybe. I don't know. Sure, yeah. I might, be, I might be rapping. <laughs> We're not... Do, are we counting those as deaths? Yes. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it could be the dance thing else, too. I, I hope not. That would be my guess, because it has... It had a full state. I've, I've used this cartridge many times. So we're not really sure what's happening right now. We're hoping we can stop it. Janky hack, mate. Yeah, janky hack. Oi! All right, now try. No. Nope. The music goes away. I don't know. It could be the SNES. Will it save on the cartridge, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It saved can on the we cartridge. get a... Or... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Yeah! Ah. <laughs> this is Grand Poo World 2. Yeah. Um, I was doing well. I was GG uh, run over time. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I mean, it, it, not, not for nothing, but Mitch was uh, on a PB. A very, very right good. Very, very, very good really he well. was well within a reach of getting a PB, which um, this is, it was a game this unforgiving. You really, uh, you got to take those times where you have that good early game through sends and, yeah. um, and ride it out. Um, I have very calm feet here, just saying. <laughs> Please. Fingers crossed. Please. Yeah, fingers crossed. I'm just going to go back again to the secret exit. At least you guys will remember where the secret exit is yeah. um, for when you all play this at home. Oh, and it's <laughs> the only exit that I, like, really, really need. Because yeah. I could just yeah. skip the exit, right? But I can't, so... <laughs> Ryu could. Yeah. <laughs> Worst case, we have, like... We could oh. just flip out a game. Oh, yeah! With a, we're in! Oh, oh, right. We're in! Yeah. Not, oh, hang yes. on. We have to make this clear. Not my fault. <laughs> Not my fault. I am so happy right now. So this section, uh, both the color palettes and the music, this was my shout-out to SMB3. And I'm not a lot of people know, I actually made an SMB3 hack. It was my first ROM hack I ever made. So I have a deep uh, love and affinity for SMB3. And it's one of the best dang SMB3 ROM hacks that are out there, too. Eh, it kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a Very really nice. mean Kaizo block right there. Helper block. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot, I'm sorry. <laughs> Keep the meme going, man. Man, I mean, I'm happy for the one shot, but I, I do miss the synth. You know, I really wish <laughs> yeah. we got so, to the synth th part of the song. This goal tape, if you grab this goal tape, uh, you will die. Uh, <laughs> You need to grab an off-screen key, uh, wrap around, and once again, when people die to that, hilarious. It's, it, it, you know, <laughs> legitimately, it is hilarious when people die to that. I had a pop-off because I one-shot that uh, end section and then died to the post-goal troll, and it was uh, not ideal. You should have gone through that up pipe. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Okay, so this level I consider has one of the most beautiful color palettes I have ever seen. Yeah. Um, Burns the eyes. <laughs> it reminds me of McDonald's. <laughs> so I was going for sort of, for sort of a fun house aesthetic, and uh, this is also one of the most trolly levels in the entire game. A number of players lost their minds in this level, didn't they? There's a lot of... <laughs> one of them is sitting on this couch. Oh my god. I think two of them are sitting on this couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things that, uh, thankfully, Mitch won't be going through that happen in this level if you don't know what to do. And um, it's, it's actually one of the simpler levels in the game when you know what you're doing. It's a really hard speed strat right there, yeah. and you got it. Ooh, very nice. Very nice. nice. Very nice. 
And now uh, let's see if he can get this jump. Okay, this is where all of the nonsense begins. Ooh. A dump. It's a dump. Okay, I, I'm gonna try and count. 32 throws, and then we'll throw we'll throw him up. 32 throws. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> so this piece, which if you try screen. to catch it, it actually runs away from you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's very confusing on your first playthrough. However, uh, that Mecha Koopa is the secret to how you actually end up hitting this P-Switch. Uh, no joke, I spent like like an hour just like, what do I do in this room? I have no idea. Um, my first time playing through it, and then this Mecha Koopa just falls through the roof and then hits me and kills me again. Here comes Swag. Oh. Oh. oh! oh no! Okay, well, now we're in danger because. <laughs> no! no. <laughs> okay. We get to see the troll well, now. Now you get to see the troll. <laughs> <laughs> this is just one of the trolls in this yeah. level. One out of six. Yeah, one out of six trolls in this level. So on your first playthrough, you have no idea what's happening, and it, it kind of looks like that's going to smash you into the wall. Will it um, I know. Will it come back? Did the Mecha Kuba will respawn. He will respawn. Yes. Okay. There he is. Yo! 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 Worth it. Worth it. Worth it. That is the actually the hardest young. You don't have to reset. Time. You don't have to reset. You're good. Yeah. Worth it. <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> that yump is really underestimated. Yeah, per the rules, right. that takes uh, three minutes off your time. So I want to see that over there, guys. I think I'm stressed for this level the most. Okay. So we're actually returning to the level Deuce Layer. Um... <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We're all adults. Uh, vile sewage flows throughout this tunnel where most of chat suggestions ended up for this game. <laughs> so uh, I made this I made this uh, this entire game on Twitch chat and if you guys didn't know this Twitch chat it sucks at making levels. <laughs> so for oh. the most part I ignored every single thing they ever said. <laughs> yeah, so it, I mean the, the the rising lava there is exactly what you think it is and again the uh, the water is exactly what you think. It yes. So this uh, section is like constantly being on a timer. He has to go through here, not too fast, not too slow, uh, to match where the pipes and water are exactly. He must obey the speed limit. Yes. Funny little okay, troll right there. Helper yeah. dolphin. <laughs> yeah, that, that dolphin <laughs> helps you into the soft walk up there to let you know that uh, you were close. You were close. <laughs> An encouragement dolphin. <laughs> you almost made it, slugger. Okay, the second section is even tighter than the first one. And uh, we also threw in some extra tricks in here to make it extra difficult. Quick shell jump. So Mitch is actually going to purposely pause there for a moment to set up a later cycle. Ooh. Ooh. I paused too long. Yeah. So by pausing there very briefly, he's setting up the timer for later in the level so everything will work out perfectly for him. Um, but really, this level is very, very tight, and uh, it, it, it is one of the hardest levels in the game, if not the hardest. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. stressful level. You're constantly all over the place. Yeah, it's a lot of one-tile jumps, which, I mean, it's easy for us one-tile men up here. Uh, <laughs> oh, I meant that too. He's the one diamond. Mitch is an honorary one tile man. <laughs> I give up. Okay. Really nasty Kaizo Ooh. block right there. Ooh. Okay, this final sequence is a very tight sequence of jumps to make it into the final pipe. That last rock can get you nice. And he makes it in. And then we get shot into the aftermath that all of Chad's suggestions have caused. <laughs> so if anybody ever says I'm like a not a nice guy, there's actually, if, if you don't make that final pipe, if you can't jump into there, a <laughs> final shell will fall. So you have one final chance to shell jump and make it up into the pipe. So really, I'm like a really nice guy. You're a merciful yeah, God. Yeah. Merciful God. And he's a merciful yeah. God. Praise be. This is a lot of people's favorite level, I'd say. Berkwood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so this level, um, you know, I wouldn't say this was people's favorite level at first. <laughs> yes. A lot of people despise this level at first. Um, I still hate it. <laughs> That's no, really I, hard, that Goomba jump. I would totally agree with that. Like, on the casual playthrough, this is probably my least favorite, but it's probably my favorite in the speed run. Yeah. Um, backwards Goombas, why are they backwards? It's good. So you want to explain, like, I, I know you talked about how this level has such a different pace to kind of, like, break up the monotony. 
Yeah, I think if uh, when I was making this game, I, I at this point, I think I'd made like two or three levels uh, um, when I actually started making this one. And I was worried that if every level is fast, every level is go, 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 then uh, the game would become sort of samey and it wouldn't have enough variety. So this level, I purposely wanted to make it a little bit slower paced. And when I did that, I actually made like a really interesting speedrun level. And there's all kinds of strats everywhere in this game. Okay, so that mushroom that goes up from behind the tree, there's actually a, a Kaizo block beneath the midway, and if you hit it, then that, uh, that mushroom will kill you. Helper block. That's right. no, no, that one doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> this is a genius strat by Mitch. He actually screen wraps right there to cause a double eat, uh, which allows him to save about seven seconds right there, uh, skipping another eat. Oh! Ooh. What? Got him! D-pad. <laughs> So those final jumps are probably the hardest jumps in the level. They are deceptively tight. And uh, we're actually helping Yoshi grow up. We're feeding him to become a, a nice big boy. And uh, really, there's only one thing to do with him once Yoshi's grown up, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a tool, not a jewel, guys. To see that strat one more time, respawning the mushroom. It's so genius. I had not seen that until no. I came to GDQ and Mitch showed it to me. That was a new one. Oh, oh. You. I was wondering if I was going to mess that up, too. <laughs> so those Lakitus that are bouncing up and down in the lava, those are actually dolphins, but uh, Super Mario World reuses tile sets and graphics. So uh, in this tile set, that's just what dolphins look like, and I think it's really funny. As you can see, nice and consistent. So that's, that's always good. It was just, that was like such a galaxy brain strat when you showed it to me. I felt so dumb that I didn't find it. There we go. Oh, oh. oh my god. <laughs> Saved. That, that was good. calculated. He this was is calculated. The final eat. Oh, Yoshi. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> so. You're not going to get two people with that. <laughs> <laughs> so. That, uh, that's sort of like a, that final troll there. It's just a, the entire level I've been sending poison mushrooms at you. Uh, there I send a one-up at you. If you jump backwards, there's an invisible block that kills you. Oh, God. <laughs> Well, that's the helper block. It helps you not to be scared. <laughs> <laughs> Teaches you to face your fears. Exactly. Secret. This level. This. Yeah, this level is definitely one of the hardest in the speedruns and features uh, probably the hardest of a lot of hard doors. And um, I know people are going to be like, doors aren't hard, but trust me, they are so hard to go into. And this one is uh, the cream of the crop. Yeah. yeah. So at this point in, in development, I just really fallen in love with making vertical sections that go down, and uh, I, I also fell in love with the idea of using the spider webs as uh, as nets. So I reskinned the graphics and uh, made them act like that. So uh, a lot of a lot of really tight jumps in this section, and uh, this coming up here is everybody's favorite item: the disco shell or the multicultural shell. <laughs> Uh, Mitch's strat there is terrifying to me. Yeah, <laughs> it's right? so terrifying. <laughs> this is coming up on probably the worst door in the game. Oh, oh my god! god. Oh. Dang it! <laughs> and as you can see, there's no checkpoint, so he has to go through the whole thing again. Yeah, yeah. And this level is very difficult because you have to constantly be uh, pressing and letting go of the up button to grab onto those nets. And uh, it just causes a lot of issues when you're trying to throw things on a horizontal plane. A lot of runs have come here literally to die in people's yes. speed runs. Yeah, it's definitely another one of those stopper levels. You don't get any breaks in this game. Like, like literally no jump to you. It's like, <laughs> that's a trivial jump. Like, every nope. single jump. Because I insane. spent so much time on every single jump, so I, I had time to make them all as bad as I could. <laughs> that stresses me out, Mitch. <laughs> I, hate, I hate it. Coming up on the door again. Oh. Oof. Nice. Very nice. So that section requires you to manipulate the disco shell exactly to give you just enough time, and there's not enough room to kill the disco shell there. So here we're going to see uh, one of those three boo fights in the game, I believe. Uh, this one is unique. You can see there's a ring of smaller boos surrounding him, and you have to constantly weave in and out of the boo circle as you fight the boo uh, and get all the hits you need. Oh. So it can't go too high either. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> there are spikes above and below the screen that kind of keep you in the middle of the screen the entire time. There's also a uh, one final Kaizo block that he has to avoid right there. As, as far as I'm aware, that's the only Kaizo block in a boss fight yeah. I've ever yeah. seen. 
Very nice. Very, very nice fight on, a very, on probably one of the hardest exits in the game. This exit coming up is one of my favorites. It is four rooms, I believe. Yeah, it's four rooms, and each room kind of has like a trope to like um, to, to trick your mind, and you'll see it right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. In this level, I sort of wanted to tear up the rule book and just kind of throw in all kinds of things that would be sort of tricks and traps, and we'll sort of see them in each section as they come. So here you'll notice the ground is literally exploding as he moves. Um, oh my gosh, yes, thank you. That is a very hard jump. The Doritos, man. So I'm difficult. so glad that's over. Get it out of here. So this room, uh, this is going to look a little strange. The munchers in this in this room are safe, and the ground explodes under you and uh, kills you. So everywhere he goes here is moving from spike to muncher. This water is also reverse, um, just because, of course, it's all you know, why could you just swim in normal water? Exactly. I mean, you could. It's really fun to pull the wings off flies. You know? Also, that door. What? What? Doesn't, what? doesn't exist. Just kidding. <laughs> this section is just hard. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a layer two section. Or th this whole um, room right here is layer two. You're gonna see he's gonna come up, and it's gonna just be a layer two slamming up and down, and he's gonna have to like time his jump so perfectly to not get hit. Yeah, this uh, second platform coming up here is so difficult. Yeah. This so part is, this is all about timing. Oh, Very beautiful. nice. Wow. Yeah. If you're a little too early, if you're a little too late, uh, that part can just go so wrong. A lot of weird things happening in this section. In this one, Mario can wall jump, and he can also cling to the ceiling everywhere where those uh, blue blocks are. The music playing right now is from uh, Shinobi 3. This is another port done by Composer. Shout out to the Composer again. And one last jump. Oh, it very nice. barely gets it. Dope, Dope tip. tip. Nice. That was nice. <laughs> the important part? And yep. he gets oh, it. Wow. Two, for two. Two, wow. For two. Wow. two for two. Two for two. Wow. Two for two. I don't know. If we've I, know ever I really had don't want to reset. <laughs> I got one. Wow. And so if you, that section, the one-up is there to make you hesitate, and if you hesitate, uh, the ground falls away under you and kills you. That's so, so funny, it's so, it's so... It really is funny. <laughs> <laughs> We're now returning to the level, we have to beat the normal exit now. This is one of my favorite aesthetics in a level, just this, like, deep red. The background, fun fact for you, is actually the background from water levels, just uh, recolored. <laughs> that is true. So I, I'm a fond, I'm very fond of reverse engineering things to be from one thing to be something else. So I took the water background, I smoothed out the color palette, and turned it into these sort of ominous cliffs. Added the lightning, and boom. Okay, this part is difficult to time. Oh! oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> nice. Wow. Very nice. So it's that, really hard to not die there. Yeah. yeah. So when this game first came out, you know, like, the rumors about, you know, the, the creation of the game were being spread amongst Twitch. You know, like, a bunch of false rumors. Like, there's going to be, you know, five fishing boos in one level. We're like, <laughs> oh, you know, that can't exist. And lo and behold, um, that level does exist, and we'll see it coming <laughs> shortly. Uh, These are fishing bones. <laughs> My mistake. Yes. Okay, fishing boo is notoriously difficult to manipulate. It depends on Mario's movement and the location of the screen, and it's just rather unpleasant at all times. Nice. This last section is just extremely tight, and each jump has to be pretty perfect. Because, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hear the P-switch, right? Just, you, know, you never know. Do we have time for a quick donation? Yes. yes. Sure. We have $20 from Viva Saika that says, watching Poos play for vids of Grand Poo World 2 is the most fun I've ever had watching Kaizo games. A big thanks to Poo and Barb and the entire Kaizo community for so many hours of entertainment. Also, marbles. <laughs> <laughs> so this level is titled uh, Danger Zone. Poo, could you tell us a little bit about Danger Zone? So, um, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a ROM hack aficionado myself, and uh, I like to go through and occasionally just play some of the, the random, uh, you know, non-Mario uh, fan-made games out there. And uh, one day I came across this game called Danger Zone, and then my... <laughs> that was the last you heard of me for 24 hours, so... <laughs> <laughs> Needs to say, uh, shout out to Danger Zone and its sequel, Danger Zone 2. 
So this level is all featured around the rope, and ropes have appeared in a lot of Super Mario World hacks, and really I just wanted this level to be sort of a fun, fast-paced fast uh, uh, platforming level. The rope where it's moving faster is uh, sliding on a tile called 1F0, and uh, that tile doesn't appear in Vanilla Super Mario World the way it's used in ROM hacks. Nice. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> Very Ooh nice. that one shot, baby! Very nice. Oh, man. We are hot. cruising along right now. That was hot. I'm good. Yeah, dude. The final wall of chainsaws is there to make you uh, poop your pants. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and it does. <laughs> um, one cool thing Barb did here, if you see these pipes that are kind of scattered out um, throughout the overworld, they actually lead you back to the starting area where you can save if you have a checkpoint. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're, you know, you're spending hours and hours on a level, but you got a checkpoint. You actually don't lose it, and that's one of the, uh, the cool like quality of life things Barb does. This the level's the best. The unfortunate reality of the overworld is that everybody just got lost on it. Yeah. <laughs> I think we need to do another shout out for Composer that he um, composed this song. It's an absolute original from Composer. Mm -hmm. So, completely 100% yeah. original. So this what <laughs> This level uh, features the use of the least jank item in Super Mario World, the blue block. Zero <laughs> jank involved in those. Hard door. Oh, Hard it. door, baby. He gets it. I think there's a two-frame window to enter that door. Two or three frames. Death. Yeah. Intentional death. All right, so Mitch is going to take an intentional death here. The, uh, I'm glad you got the midway first. <laughs> <laughs> Just spending my money, okay. The reason why he's taking a death there is to reset the boss RNG. So, when that, so if he one-shots it, he's going to get an unfavorable boss pattern. By dying there, he's resetting the RNG to make it easier and uh, faster to kill. This part, you are racing the blue block up. Nice. We should also know look at that this level is, Yeah, the level is timed also. Got to be very careful to not open. And look at right, right three seconds. Very nice. Oh, that was hot. That was hot. Mitch, slow down. You're making this look too easy. Yeah, that was hot. <laughs> So this is not your uh, traditional Resnor fight. Uh, it's too slow. That's too slow. The Resnors are sitting atop a note block, and to kill them, you have to hit the note block three times for each Resnor. So that's a total of 12 hits you're required to get. You are also on a timer in this section as well. You only have 35 seconds to complete it. This is fine. Help me. <laughs> I can't. <stop> <laughs> I just gotta got to get it. rid of one of them. There we oh. go. Got it. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is going to be super tight. Nah, we got it. Not, not the 21. Power. <laughs> not the 21. <laughs> so Mitch, the, Mitch's fastest time beating that is with 21 seconds remaining on the timer. Uh, and that's just an insane time. I think that might be the fastest I've ever heard. Isn't there a portrait in this coming up room that he should probably just take a quick look at? I believe there is. Like, oh, right, right. Go, go, go up. Yeah, just go, go up. up. You're going to want to start select after you do that, though. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just try to select real quick. Oh, man. Who's this I... guy again? Uh, some loser. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So that is uh, three cats watching Top Gun. Uh, Wasn't he the coach of a team that was here or something? He was. He was. Oh. <laughs> So this is uh, by far everybody's favorite level in the game. Uh, it is a very lengthy and uh, I call it an angry cape level because <laughs> after I made Grand Pool World 1, Pooh said, uh, <laughs> oh, you know, Barb sucks a cape. So, uh, <laughs> in quotes. In so, quotes. Yeah, so that made me mad, so I made a really, really hard cape level to get revenge on everybody. It's true. Um, in my splits for this level, I actually it's actually called Barb Can Cape. Uh, <laughs> so, in his inevitable sequel, he doesn't feel slighted and feel he has to uh, prove something. We can Apology just, accepted. Yes, we can just have a normal cape level. This, so this is a... Oh, oh go, go, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, so this tunnel, you're going to see, uh, it's not seeing something you see often in uh, Super Mario World ROM hacks, where he's speeding up and slowing down everywhere with the cape. Uh, and if you don't move at the exact right speed, you'll get caught. Yes! Wow. Oh, oh my gosh. That's the, yeah, that's the hardest section, too. That is the yeah. hardest yeah. section in this cape level. Those first two rooms, there's no checkpoints, so you have to repeat the entire first two rooms over and over if you don't move. That's long. so nice of you. Mm -hmm. Very nice of you. You don't often see a uh, ah, like platforming section, so in this section I wanted to uh, utilize the cape in a way that I hadn't really seen too often in, in Kaizo ROM hacks. Yeah, it should be noted, you really, you have to get like this perfect jump off the disco shell in order for you to go over those spikes. Wow. Speedy boy. Um, coming up at the end here too, there's actually kind of like this little trolley spike that Mitch is going to have to avoid 
as he gets rid of the turn blocks. Oh. oh. I didn't even let go fly. I just go down. <laughs> Oi. Just admit defeat. <laughs> It's worth pointing out as well that this, these backgrounds, uh, if you're noticing the castle background is uh, custom made by me, and you can also see the clouds outside too, because I just wanted uh, the full immersive gaming Oh my experience. god, I never noticed I the never clouds. I never noticed either. Oh my god, that's <laughs> so good. I put a lot of work into this and I want everybody to know. <laughs> <laughs> the background is really amazing. Oh, Oof. Very nice. Very, very nice. Yeah, so you have to get like the perfect platform drop right there to get that spike to line up great. I love that in this, once you get to this level, the music changes because it really changes that monotony of hearing the same song over and yeah, over. Yeah, if you have a really long level, I think it's appropriate to uh, change the music up and give the player something new to listen to. Uh, this section is like my small shout out to uh, Panga World made by Link Dead. I did it All again, double okay. What? I didn't even realize. Oh, no. oh. You know what, the level giveth and it taketh away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is another really challenging section where you have to change your direction in flight. Uh, in vanilla Super Mario World, it's actually a 50-50 shot when you twirl with the cape, whether you're going to turn left or right. So I'm a really nice guy, and I made it not 50-50. So if you turn, you will turn. Oh, I knew I went too high there. This level, I tell you guys. This is a reminder again that this is a lot harder than it looks. Very, very difficult. Yeah, this whole game is just ridiculously hard, and uh, Mitch is kind of slaying it right now. Yeah, he, yeah. he's <laughs> really just making this look like a piece of cake. Yeah. There's probably someone in chat that's like, oh, I'll play Grand Pool too. Yeah, it's, it's, it, we can't emphasize enough. It is one of the probably five or ten hardest Kaizo ROM hacks out there. So you might not know this, but if you grab a, a vine or a cage, you can t maintain your flight. You can also fly with items in your hands as well. Very nice. So Mitch has completed four rooms. He's got about 30 left to go. So we're almost <laughs> 30 minutes. <laughs> no, he's got two rooms left. Two rooms left. Another cool thing I like about this level is each section kind of like um, showcases a unique concept that you can do with the cape. Yeah. Like it's not you're just flying through and then you know it's it's all totally. Oh oh. Swag. Oh, you, you've never seen that before. Oh, swag. Yeah. Okay, this is the final room. It's another vertical going down section, which I really fell in love with when I was making this game. So you're going to see he's going to twirl this Bowser Jr. statue, or the Bowser statue, and he's going to change his jump. See, I, I didn't bother adding in the motor skills patch, so I just make you do it by letting go of these statues. I'm too lazy. Beautiful. Uh, 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 I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> We're going to say oh, hi to our buddy Yoshi. Let's save him. Okay, we'll save him. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Uh, so if you remember the ropes from Sen's Fortress, the tight ropes, uh, I kind of use them again here. Um, or, okay, I will admit, the, the troll in that level, when you fall through the tight rope, is really funny. That <laughs> it got, it really got funny. me. It, it got everybody. We everybody have known, right? Everybody like, except Laser Belt. She's the only one who got through it. Yeah. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> it's to help you by teaching you that sometimes you need to slow down in life exactly. and appreciate the finer things. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like your positive... Uh, Vibes. Yeah, I'm a okay. very positive person. This is a very good and unique level. The gimmick here is the best. The best. <laughs> I think this is known as the fan favorite level, Idle Hands. Yeah. Um, so there's. It's gonna melt a, your mind. You're gonna see this clock, and what this clock does is it freezes every sprite you see um, on screen. This is so cool. You're gonna hear a little ticker in the back, and once it clicks, I think like three or four times. Oh, oh I tried to go back up, respawn them. You actually use that as an audio cue to know when to um, basically progress further. This, uh, the clock was first featured in a ROM hack called Ketastrophe. Uh, Ketastrophe doesn't use it in sort of like a puzzle scenario, and it's one of my favorite ROM hacks. I wanted to use it in a platforming scenario by forcing you to freeze sprites and use them in various ways. So all these jumps would just have been impossible without that ASM. Uh, if you notice, the hands on that clock are upside down. That is a broken clock. If you try to hit it, it doesn't work. And the bullets kill you. Oh, Yoshi. Oh, it's so cute. He's actually helping. Oh, uh, no, he's not. <laughs> nice. That makes that a free. You're going to be coming up to, like, one of the meanest doors in this game. Oh, this one's hard. <laughs> nice. Oh, and he nails oh, it. Nice. He nails it. That was so good. 
There's a lot of comedy in that checkpoint, and it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a pretty deep inside joke at this point, I think, within our community. And uh, we'll, you got to play the whole Grand Prix World Series to really get it. Got one of them. That was an interesting hitbox. Ugh. Oh, you can do it. This is going to be tough. So this fight is another Reznor fight that still has a quick timer. I'd give up. So. I'm out. <laughs> He's going to take an intentional death there because the timer, even if he'd hit the Reznors, the timer would not allow yeah. him. He needs about to have six or seven seconds left on the timer after killing all the Reznors to survive. Getting those double hits is very hard, and it saves a lot of time for every... Oh, oh my gosh, he keeps doing that. Oi! He can get one more. Oh. Come on! What Just number are we at, guys? 28. 28? Oh, not bad. Just occasionally, these Reznors will give you a fireball that's just so mean. All right. There we go. Ooh. There we go. Very nice. 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 12 Good seconds job, to spare. All right, now, here, here is where the game really, in my opinion, gets really, really good. Um, because this is definitely my favorite thing that's ever been in one of these, Kai one of these little weird Kaizo games that we play. Um, <laughs> Should you, should, you want to just go ahead and, and, and start it off with it, you know? I guess. Uh, so the, as the game has been progressing, one thing that you're not going to really know from watching a speedrun is that there is a gigantic puzzle sort of spread throughout the entire game. And you don't really understand that until you get to this level. Uh, you're going to see Mitch going directly to a secret exit. This secret exit took people hours to find. And uh, it leads you to, I guess we could call it like an escape room yes. within, the, within the game. And the escape room, we're not going to be able to really do it justice here because it took various creators or, or players 12 hours, 10 hours, 8 hours to solve. Uh, so we're going to climb these invisible blocks up here. Shout out to Mario Maker. <laughs> and uh, can we talk a little bit about your neck in this portrait maybe? Uh, yeah, I was lifting before this picture was taken. So. <laughs> Mitch is going to do a little swag in my mouth right there. Swag. Yeah, a little swag in your mouth. Swag <laughs> Throw it up. <laughs> So this level is the Orblia. This is where you must uh, solve the puzzles and find the answers to advance and uh, find the final Peace Witch Palace. Uh, we're not going to really see much of it because there is a secret code in the game and Mitch is just going to zoom directly to the end. Um, but ma many people on Twitch listen to this music for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> you should have done it for charity. It was for charity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll hit the barb dab for you. All right. Three for three. But first, yeah, first we're going to make a little stop. <laughs> so there were some people with Grand Pool World 1 who put forth such an effort in playing the game and helping that I wanted to give them special shout outs. There, uh, this is the Hall of Champions, and there are portraits of Laser Belch, who is the world record holder for Grand Pool World 1, and Dode, who was the uh, first person Where to beat Grand guys? World 1. And there's also uh, this really ugly guy. <laughs> wait, wait for it. Get out of my room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll get out, I'll get out. <laughs> you, can, you can start to like. <laughs> so when I, when I created this game and it, it was released and everybody was playing it, nobody knew anything about that. Uh, first, let's see if we get the yump. Ah, oh, oh, reset, reset, reset. 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 <laughs> so, so nobody knew that my voice was in the game. It was actually the help of Kevin M who helped me get that in there. And uh, the reactions of people finding, hearing my game, hearing my voice in the game. I thought you hacked my Discord. I know that's what there. I thought. I thought you. I, that's exactly what I thought, though. He was. I, I was like, Barb, how'd you get in here? <laughs> So it's now that we've, me. <laughs> now that we've hit the final piece, which we can now proceed to beat this level proper. Um, this level is pretty unique amongst Kaizo games because uh, there are paths within this level. There's actually, uh, I, I did the math, there is 192 different ways you could play and beat this level because of all the different rooms. And the really, the really funny thing is that all of the rooms are more or less like the same time. So everybody who speeds run, speed runs this game kind of does a different room. And Mitch does my favorite set of rooms, I think, that I've seen anybody do. I will actually concur with that assessment. Mitch does the, the swaggiest of the rooms. The swaggiest, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I definitely do the easiest ones. He, he goes for the, the most swag. consistent. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Don't want to don't down. So once, you grab. A, once you use a key, you can only go in that section, and you're also locked in once you get the midway, so you can't go back and change your mind and say, like, no, nah, I, like I don't like this room. I'm going to a different one. 
In this section, we're using this block to move all, all across this lava, and we need our keys everywhere, so. Hard jump coming up. Nice. Very nice. Another choice of four. This is a vertical this section my, with my uh, layer two scrolling left and right. Uh, it's kind of an homage to a level in Grand Pool World 1. And I really like that one, so I kind of just made it again. <laughs> <laughs> I love this But a little bit different. <laughs> I love this part. There's a really tight section coming up right nice. here. Yeah, they're perfect. Very nice. Th th this is where Mitch kind of wanders off and does his own room yeah, to Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anyone else who does this particular room. Laser. Penga. Penga. I was going to say, Laser actually does this room now, too. So this session is kind of a combination of the ropes from Sen's Fortress and also the Mecha Koopas from uh, Pooh's Laughter House. Nails it. What? Oh. 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 <laughs> what, you, what, you, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I cursed him. <laughs> All right, let's do that again without the chum. That one wasn't me. There's no troll there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play me for that one. <laughs> yeah, this one's... Then this one's turn back. Yeah, very nice. I forgot the turn back, so I jump. So almost every runner who runs this game does the Thwomp Room because the Thwomp Room is pretty fast and it's also the easiest. Um, but they're also cowards because this one is <laughs> by far the coolest. I don't think anyone's disagreeing with that. This is... <laughs> yeah. It is the fastest, though. So this section you're going to see a combination of the clock from Idle Hands and uh, Bowser's Big Balls. That's a really hard jump. Yeah. Very well done. So once you do those first four sections, um, you end up, everyone comes here. No matter what, you don't get a pick. You just get sent to this last This room is required, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh. 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 I did let go, though. I, yeah. I am learning. <laughs> uh, that final jump is pretty awkward and honestly pretty janky to get to, get to line up. Yeah. You can, you can oy me for that one. That's fine. I remember when you were first making this game, um, there was a no, no, bro, bro list. And I, I think on that list was shell jumps. And I think right at the end, he's like, you know what? I just got to put some in. Yeah, towards the end, I've, I've been working on this for thousands of hours. And I'm like, ah, I don't care anymore. Do it. No. Oh. <laughs> Helper fish. Yeah, that, that fish is uh, there to congratulate you on a job well done. You've gotten through the level. All right. Okay. Nice cathedral coming up. So at this point, if you haven't solved the puzzle, this is where the mystery really deepens. Uh, you're going to see something kind of unusual here in just one moment. Uh, there's a, a large door. You might think the boss is there, but that's actually not where the boss is. Uh, shout out to Zelda, too. There's just a straight-up hidden wall that you go through right there. <laughs> this is, like, the only thing I don't want to do. But, like, I want to do it. Oh, see, you I love it. This is my I, I, like, I, I love, love it. Just, part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You never know. It's the best. So this Wait, is the first try has to be small. <laughs> oh my oh. gosh! Oh god! So this is the final boss of Grand Pool Two. Uh, this is Bowser, uh, created by me and uh, Kaizo Man, and it was an insane amount of work on both of our parts. But Kaizo Man deserves nearly all the credit for this. You're gonna see Bowser doing some pretty insane oh, stuff. Oh, dude! In this fight. The AI right there. Barb's actually controlling this Bowser through his pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and this Bowser actually learns as you play it, so it'll start dodging you the more and more you, uh, you die. So you really want to get the first shot. Are you going to one-shot this? Oh, my God. Oh, man, that's a good lineup. That's a good lineup. No! Oh! The random! Uh, he's got All a right. jump at you attack. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> so there is a hidden mushroom in the ceiling off of that uh, chain. Uh, a number of players beat this entire fight and never even knew it was there. <laughs> uh, one thing you'll see during this fight is that Bowser changes colors. The colors kind of let you know how many hits Bowser has left to kill. Uh, five wall. <laughs> and you see uh, Bowser has a lot of very difficult <laughs> to avoid so attacks. Silly. There's so many different ones. And as you can see, he takes like 7,000 hits, so. The random. 
This is the Bowser's final phase. Greed! The greed. In Bowser's final phase, the fire tracks you from the ceiling and falls constantly. So the final the final section of the of the fight, uh, it just increasingly gets worse and worse and worse. You want to end the fight as quickly as possible. Ooh. Very nice. Ah, the ghost. You're gonna see him sort of juggling items. It's a lot more it's a lot more difficult than it looks. By doing so, he's trying to preserve as many hits as he can to hit Bowser as fast and as often as possible. And you can pretty much hit Bowser constantly in the fight. And that's by design. You see that the ground changed color, this is actually ice physics, and it doesn't seem like it affects you that much, but ice is one of the worst trolls in this fight. It just makes everything harder. Ooh. Nice jump. Oof. Nice. Oh. Uh, any other attack. Uh, and this is what I'm talking about. This Bowser has this, like, Senate AI where it starts to learn <laughs> as you play, like T-1000 or something. We should also say that this Bowser is incredibly RNG, and the fact that this isn't a marathon is pretty insane. Yes. Barb, can you just let him beat it already? <laughs> no. Barb has a second <laughs> controller that he's playing with right now, controlling <laughs> it. I've beaten this boss probably over a hundred times now, and no matter what, there's still always that chance, even if you play flawlessly, that he's just gonna give you a pattern that is absolutely unavoidable. You're gonna die. Ooh, yeah. My goodness, he's but, on something today. No matter how many hit points, even if you have a mushroom, uh, the, oh, you're gonna see the a, hammers. That's the Australian hammer, it, uh, it's a boomerang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Oh my gosh. Uh. Uh. <laughs> oh! No! Come on! Anything but the hammer. The hammer. I've been so close oh, so many times. Hammer. You've been at seven hits three times now. Yeah. Yeah, the first time you go through this too, like you're like, how many hits does this thing take? Like when does it stop? <laughs> yeah. I will say, however, that like even as difficult as this boss is, it is most definitely the most fun I've ever had in SMW, Kaizo, for the, sure. The boss is still easier than the puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> no Don Fled Ruth. <laughs> oh, oh, five wall. Oh. So no matter, even if you have a mushroom, the walls can instant kill you pretty much at any point in the fight, so it's really, really dangerous. It's probably his most dangerous attack. Come on, Bowser. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, oh, he tried to jump. And that's an that's an example of why the walls are just so so dangerous in this fight. Let's go, I believe you got this. You got this. Aren't your words, Barb, that those walls are a testament One. to human greed? <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> Two. <laughs> this pattern you're getting, man, you haven't got a first shell. One of the biggest killers in this fight is greed, because there's so many opportunities to hit Bowser, and if you reach just a little much to get a hit, uh, that's when you find yourself getting five-walled or four-walled, and then the fight is just over immediately. <laughs> it, it, uh, his hardest like thing to block is the straight jump over, and yeah. he can do it at any time. You got it. Come on, give me a shell. <laughs> Five wall. Nice. Yeah. Uh, the timer is not over yet. Is not over yet. Save or kill, save or kill, save or kill. Are we gonna be saving or killing the Yoshis? All right, so I do believe that there is a Yoshi at the end of this, and it was very close, but you're gonna save that Yoshi 6,644 to 6,565. Save just wins by that little bit. Ooh. So <laughs> So after such a hard boss fight, you think that oh, I beat the game, but no, I wanted one. I wanted to send you packing with one final section and one final uh, torture chamber. Escape. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. Sh shout out to Super Metroid right there. Wee! 
We're saving them? Are we saving them? Saving. Saving. I don't know about that. Time, that time. Is time, time. Yo, GG, man. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Incredible run. That was really good. Yeah, that was really great. Dude, he was in a groove in the yeah. middle. Are you <laughs> fitting crash? <laughs> That's uh, Grand Prix World 2. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Yeah. These guys are awesome. Come on, give it up for them. <laughs> uh, we didn't do anything. <laughs> We didn't do anything, we just hung out. Helper couch. So a couple things here. Let's hear it for Mitch and the lovely commentators as well. Thank you all so much for that awesome commentary of that run. And also shout outs to Tech also for replacing the Super Nintendo quickly. Y'all rock. All right, a couple donations here. We have $500 from Tang Eng that says, I think it bears repeating that a lot of people contribute to the creation of hacks, like test players, boss designers, musicians. The Kaizo community appreciates all of the time you volunteered for our enjoyment. Tang Eng also uh, donates $500, saying much gratitude to Barbarous King for making this great hack. It has provided hundreds of hours of entertainment put in a Kaizo block. All right, we're going to be taking a quick ad break. Be right back. Fraternal Fortress incentive. Good luck. So I'm just, I can oh, we're back. back. We're back. Oh, we're back. We're back. back. Yeah. Two player. What is it? I can just start select. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this was a donation incentive that got met. Uh, this is actually part of the puzzle. See, when you start playing a Kaizo game, one thing you'll probably never do, because most people play Kaizo games by themselves, is hit two-player. So that was where I decided to hide one large element of the puzzle. And you're actually going to see uh, Noble Tofu, uh, the Noblet himself, is going to be tackling that level uh, right now. Yeah. Cool. I'm ready to go. Go right away. Yeah. Yeah. Count down. Let's go. Give us a countdown, guys, in five. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Yeah, so the escape room is, it's so cool, and um, it, it actually gets really meta. Uh, all the answers aren't in the game, technically. <laughs> that is true, yeah. Yes. Some of the answers are actually buried within Lunar Magic itself, which is the program you use to uh, make Super Mario World Rumble. Yes. And just to, I, I just really want to emphasize the detail that Barb put into one part of this puzzle, and I, I don't want to spoil it. He might get mad at me. Go um, oh. But uh, yeah, just go in. one of the answers, one of the codes, the answers, is actually my birthday. Right. Uh, so Barb went in, looked up my birthday, made the, made the answer to one of the codes that, and uh, just to like really emphasize the the Grand Poo World Tunes part of it, and it was, it was I just want like the like, for everybody. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> but it was like one of those tearjerker moments for me for sure. So, so this level is Fraternal Fortress. This level features Luigi, who uh, oh that beginning by the way for your first try is way harder for some reason. <laughs> 
This is a really tough level. So this is the only level in the game featuring Luigi exclusively. Only Luigi can access this level. Mario cannot. Originally, I was just going to have Luigi have a long hallway, and then the answer to the puzzle was going to be there. But I figured that that would be kind of disrespectful to the worst Mario brother, so... <laughs> the shade. Okay, all the rooms are uh, rather short. Uh, this was actually one of the final things I made in the entire game. I wasn't even sure what I wanted to do with this, so I decided, eh, I'll make a level, and uh, it actually ends up be being a lot of people's favorite level. Okay, so that jump, the reason why he jumps so awkwardly is that there's a really mean Kaizo block under, under the left side of the pipe. So I decided to make one of the worst things in Super Mario World even worse by adding a Kaizo block beneath it. It really is like the meanest pipe. <laughs> Nice. That was the only jump I was actually worried about. This is like some of the best levels, in my opinion, in the game. And it's like, I don't know, I love this whole section. And most of us only ever played it once. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually the final room. It's a rather short, pretty quick level to get through. Shout out to that Blark sound. Lard. This is the final double shell jump sequence. Very difficult. Can he nail it first try? Ah, ah. Missing shell jumps. 2019 shell jumps. Wow. Yep. I don't know. How was I on the winning team? <laughs> You're a one-tile man, dude. <laughs> Making his way back. Right back to that really hard jump. Ah. Ah. It's rough. Uh, yeah, what's really hard about that is you have to be about three blocks away from the wall to perform a shell jump. And uh, it kind of wants you to be, like the way the level's set up, it wants you to be about two blocks away. So. Right. And just that little juggle sequence here is uh, very, very tough. Yeah. And nice. in there. And that is time. That's time. Oh, time was running. Yep. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is Barb uh, Select AXY, uh, Barb Sexy, because I am rather sexy. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this is one of the codes needed to advance in the puzzle. Uh, this actually precedes Barb down A, B, Select, which is Barb Dabs. So there's all kinds of codes and, you know, all kinds of codes and secrets in the game. <laughs> yeah. And that's for Turtle Fortress. That was it. Nice Thank you for donating. Thank you, guys. I love that thing music. It's so good. <laughs> I know. It's so good. It's such a fun level. <laughs> All right, thank you so much again for that lovely run of Grand Prix World 2. Now we're going to go to an interview. We'll be seeing Power of Audio and J Hobbs. Hello, everybody. Uh, we actually already did the Power Up Audio interview, so instead I am joined by way too many people. Like, seriously, <laughs> there are way too many of you here. Uh, I'm joined by a collection of people who actually do work with GDQ in between events for the GDQ Hotfix. Uh, so starting to my right, we've got Frozen True Ally. We have Muffins, or Hannah as I generally call her. <laughs> so I know her. We've got Railcoon. We have Nikasaur. And then more moral support, uh, we have... Tina Hacks and Smooth Operative sitting there in the back. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what GDQ Hotfix is. I'm going to throw it over to you, Muffins, because you actually kind of tend to head up uh, everything that is Hotfix, right? Yeah, um, so I'm Muffins. I run GDQ Hotfix. Uh, so basically what that means is all the streams that you see that are not during the primetime stuff for like the on-sites for AGDQ, GDQX, and SGQ, the rest of that is called the Hotfix, and that's run by me. Um, so what we do is we basically try to show off all the speedrunning community, communities that we can, as often as we can, to try to grow and get more viewership for everyone. And lately, especially, there's been kind of a surge in, in popularity of different types of shows that have been added to GDQ Hotfix, right? Yes. Uh, I actually got more free time. Uh, <laughs> so with that free time, I was like, let's have more shows. Mm -hmm. So we uh, brought on three new shows in the past three months, um, we had, well, the sprint was long lasting, which is uh, J Hobbs, Frozen, and Darkman, who is somewhere around here. Uh, and then there is, there, there, there that one. <laughs> uh, then we have the community spotlight, which Alan runs every, sorry, Railcoon runs every <laughs> Monday 
at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and then we have Tree Fort, which is on Sundays at 3 p.m. And we have four wonderful lady showrunners that take care of it, which is Nika, Tippy, and Tina, and Liz, who can't be here. And then even on top of that, there are some uh, just uh, previews whenever we've got a, an AGDQ or an SGDQ coming up and stuff. We have people who actually help with that, too. Yes, right? we have the promotional ones, which are special occasions, prom uh, promos for SGDQ, AGDQ, and uh, when new games come out or when there might be new interesting runs going on. So Jay Hobbs might know something about that as he's run some of them. Uh, we also have Sky Bills, who is just on host, who also runs them, and Author Blues that takes care of it as well. All right, well, I want to hear a little bit about some of these shows. So uh, why don't we start with you, Nika Star? What, what is uh, Tree Fort, really? And, uh, I, you know, how does, that, how does running that go? Uh, Tree Fort is a, a, a speedrunning showcase that takes place on, on Sundays, so it's 3 p.m. or so. Uh, they all have to do with a certain theme. We kind of bring people together with this theme. We create a club, and then we bring it to the Tree Fort. Uh, they can be anything, we, anything that we want. We want some kind of specific uh, unifying theme that, that we enjoy that particular week. And there's a rotating group of hosts. So I'm one of them. Again, we have Smooth Operative, we have Tina Hacks, and Liz Starr. So incredible speedrunners, these ones. I'm just a fan, so I'm, just, I'm here because I'm lucky uh, and excitable. And uh, we get to kind of pick which, which kind of group and what shows we want to see the most and talk to people all throughout. It's incredibly fun to just hang out uh, among like-minded speedrunners and kind of see what they can do. What's an example of one of the like, themes that you, you've done on that show? Uh, so Tippy did one that was uh, Spooky Club Mansions. Spooky Mansions. So <laughs> it was uh, two Resident Evil games, and I think there was another one. Uh, uh, there was the Spooky Mansion game. <laughs> was, what? Was the full name of it Tippy? Was it called Spooky Mansion? Yes. Oh, spookies, yes. Mansion. Okay, yes. Oh, spookies, yes. Spookies <laughs> House of Jump Scares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she's my friend, I should know. Uh, and then uh, Tina did uh, the uh, classic, classic Final Fantasy. Fantasy. Yeah, so there's been, so far, we're keeping mostly to a theme. Uh, soon after, we might deviate madly. And it <laughs> of course. Be, it'll Liz be mayhem <laughs> of the best. Yeah. Liz also did a uh, Sonic. Oh, yeah, Runs through where we had all the Sonic. That was the first episode. All right, and I know that there's a mascot for Tree Fort itself. Uh, so if you've been liking LK's artwork, please be sure to check it out. Yeah. Uh, her name is Faith, right? You can hey. actually use her as an emote right now. It's GDQ Faith, capital yeah. F. There we go. All right, Fun. now gonna shift gears a little bit. Real Coon, why don't you tell us a little bit about the show that you run? Hi, uh, I run the Community Spotlight, and the whole theme of the Spotlight is giving viewers a choice. So uh, we do that mainly through having a submission form where people can suggest, suggest games that they'd like to see. And then we put it up to a vote and see which one of the two options people would like to see. Awesome. Uh, where can people find this form? Uh, you can go to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix slash spotlight dash form. Awesome. And then, so, like, give, give me an example of one of the uh, previous weeks. Uh, so, the week, the last show we did before SGDQ was Katana Zero versus We Love Katamari. And the lead bounced back a couple of times, but we wound up showing Katana Zero. It, there was a race and then hard mode, which is actually really new, like within the last two weeks when that went live. And these polls uh, go up on Twitter, right? That's where people can go and vote? Yes, on the Games Done Quick Twitter, which is just at Games Done Quick. Awesome. And uh, we're looking forward to more. You've got polls open all the time for, for this as weekly show, right? You said? Yes. And uh, the next show, directly after SGDQ, we're going to have Shadow of the Colossus on July 1st. Awesome. So Can't wait for that one. For those keeping track, that is, we are going home and bring the stream immediately back up. <laughs> oh, yeah. In fact, with that segue, I'm going to shift over to Frozen real quick because uh, Frozen is my co host on a show we call the, the Sprint. So, Frozen, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Sprint? So, the Sprint is a bi weekly talk show we do on Tuesday evenings where we talk about speedrunning news. Uh, and what's been going on in the community, different things such as upcoming marathons or uh, tricks that have been found, just things that we found within the past couple of weeks. <clears throat> and then there's also our main segment where we talk about world records. Uh, we'll take one of the world records and we will break it down, bring on an expert for that game and have them show us where they tell us a little bit about the history of the run, go over the high points of the run, the low points of the run, see where we can improve on time. And it's a really cool, fast way to break down uh, a record and understand some more about it. 
Yeah, I know that segment especially is like my baby. Like that was I really wanted to make that happen. So I'm super glad that we we do that every every other week, every other Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, so if you really like podcasts and stuff, it's a video podcast right now, but is. I don't know. I think, it, I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Like, and you're, of course, forgetting the most important segment, which is Frozen's Freezer. I'm not even going to spoil what it is, all right? Just the name alone ought to tell you that that's something to tune in for. <laughs> I couldn't just uh, plug my own segment. I had to wait for you to do it. <laughs> of course, of course. All right, now there is another very notable hotfix thing that has happened recently. Um, and I think that was pretty well received by the community. So, Muffins, why don't you tell us a little bit about Frame Fatale, an online marathon that happened recently? Um, so, Frame Fatales is an online women's only speed running marathon. Uh, so basically what we were able to do is it was originally going to be, uh, so, you know, let's try to encourage uh, more submissions from women. So what we're going to do is have, you know, two runs a night for about a week and that'll be enough. Um, unfortunately, I'm really bad at moderation. So we had a five day, 70 hour marathon uh, <laughs> where we had over 30 women just go through and do their thing. And they were really able, I was very impressed with them, they were very able to do this amazing pivot uh, because did you know that squirrels are bad for the internet? <laughs> I don't I think I have sorry. the co proper context for this. Um, <laughs> so our Wednesday run, which was supposed to be my nice, relaxed, catch up on editing run, do things uh, like eat, uh, which doctors <laughs> tell you you should do. Uh -huh. um, so that was the seven hour start of Wednesday. So I had gone late Tuesdays and was like, it'll be fine because I'll have Wednesday. Uh, unfortunately, Keisha's internet got eaten by squirrels. <laughs> so Naturally, the lady stepped up and were able to pull runs out of nowhere and just fill that time and get it compressed. And we actually had one runner that brought up one run, uh, the earthbound runner, Angie, and she was able to pivot category mid run in wow. order to get the schedule to fit correctly. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been, it's been amazing working with them. Um, it's grown since then. Uh, we now have over 100 women in the Discord. If you'd like to be invited, uh, I'm going to hate saying this, DM me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that's GDQ Muffins. <laughs> oh, Ow. sorry for um, Twitter. It will be a several weeks before I get back to you now. Uh, or you can, um, no, don't do that. That's already a several week wait. Uh, <laughs> Not everybody's ready for the, the GDQ hug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fully aware of what I'm asking. Um, so all women are invited to join. Uh, we just had open submissions for the next Frame Fatale, which is going to be August 18th to 23rd, which thankfully due to slumber party tactics, we, it's going to be able to be 24 hours a day. Oh, uh, which awesome. is up from the 12 to 14 hours a day. So we, we have... just learned this too. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this is news to me. <laughs> yep. um, so we're going to be able to do that. So we're going to be able to get more time in. Uh, and basically for Frame Fatales, we got 200 hours of submissions wow. for the next one. So. Nuts. <laughs> All right. Well, I love seeing just more and more speedrunning content happening between the larger live events and everything. So please, everybody, check out the GDQ Hotfix. We're really proud of all the stuff that we, we do, and we keep trying to make it better and better. So we hope you all tune in. Most evenings at this point, I'd say, uh, sometimes even during the day, gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix is where you can go to find more information about the various shows mm -hmm. that are up. Uh, before we go ahead and throw back, I'm going to quickly talk about a few prizes here. Uh, we actually have this lovely Shy Guy acrylic painting that is a $10 minimum donation to be entered into the chance to win that, uh, that prize there. It comes to us from Puzzle P, I believe. <laughs> I am so terrible at reading names, I swear. So if I mispronounce your name, I apologize. She's currently on Stylist. There we go. <laughs> All right. We've also got these, uh, this pair of uh, amiibos here. We got the blue Yoshi and the uh, Rosalina, which is actually like peach. That's been reskinned to be Rosalina. It's, it's really awesome. Those are ten dollar minimum donation, um, but we'll get you into the running for both of them, basically. So those come from come to us from Elise, uh, and we've got the. Super Mario World sticker pack up here as well. $5 minimum donation for that one. Uh, and I'm being told to wrap up, so I'm going to keep going a little bit faster. <laughs> so we also have a, an awesome chain mail. That's right. We couldn't really show this super well last time, so I'm going to go ahead and 
pull this one right up here. Frozen, actually, if you want to help me display that one, it would be great. So we have uh, this awesome Banjo-Kazooie chain mail. Look, it like shimmers. It's so great. I love it. Uh, this is a $30 minimum donation to be entered in the running for that. And this comes to us from the Chain Nerd, who sent us a lot of, of uh, prizes over the years. So very awesome to have more from them. So we have two um, awesome pieces of artwork as well in front of everybody sitting on the couch there. Feel free to display if you'd like. Yeah, we've got the Rose of No Man's Castle uh, being displayed by Muffins and Railcoon right there. There's a $20 minimum donation to get in the running for that. It comes to us from uh, Fisher Graham, I believe. Or F F I am so bad with pronouncing names. I apologize. Uh, and then we've got the Mumbo Jumbo original watercolor painting, and that is a $10 minimum donation to get into the running for that, coming to us from Nate Callow. Uh, on the other side here, over on the desk, we have this N64 you've been seeing sitting in front of me the entire time. This is a Banjo-Kazooie custom N64. It is a $20 minimum donation to be able to get in the running for this. And that is from Mooseman Videos. So awesome one. Yeah, there we go. Getting a nice shot of that now. A, just a super cool N64. Uh, and there is so much more, of course, to see. There's also the grand prize of the Hylian Shield and the Master Sword, of course. We haven't seen the Master Sword. Just Oh, oh, oh there it is. We've got the Master Sword, ladies and gentlemen. It's here in person, ready for you. This is beautiful. $200 minimum donation to get in the running for that grand prize, but it is cumulative over the course of the marathon, so any amount of uh, dollars will keep adding to that minimum bar. That comes to us from our friends over at Heroic Replicas. And uh, all of the prizes that you're seeing here are open through Pac-Man World, so please get those donations in. Uh, of course, the grand prize is open all week long, so thank you very much, and uh, I, I think... I, we we got to do we got to do something special because we got my co-host here for the sprint. So uh, frozen, I think a, a couple times recently there have been a few uh, just problems when it comes to internet and power and uh, and the few baseball-sized hail and whatnot. And so I think Darkman's going to do the honors over here, and we we've got a special stamp to to stamp on the forehead of of those that have wronged us. So I think, I think we're going to have to uh, stamp you with the fraud stamp here. If that's right. <laughs> get it, yeah, real firm. Get it on there. All right, <laughs> we got we got the front. Hold on, let's let's get it. We gotta get it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. Thanks, Rosa, for being a good sport. All right, we are going to throw it back over to. I believe Skybills is still working the uh, host station there. If not, it'll be somebody else. Probably because we've been now. Okay, well, we've got Banjo Kazooie coming up next with Duck Gone and Haganator, so got to throw it back over to whoever's sitting over there to tell us about that run. Welcome back to Summer Games Run Quick 2019. We are powered by Twitch. And that is going to do it for me tonight. I'm going to be passing host over to Covert Muffin, and thank you so much again. It was an honor to host the Mario Block, and take care, everybody.